Hey, hey, this is Jake J, and I think cocoa powder is the most important ingredient in any fake blood recipe. Darkness is terrifying. It's terrifying. Team 3 Projects, the developers of Teleglitch, know this fact all too well. And they know damn well how to use darkness to their advantage. Now, what is Teleglitch? Teleglitch is a top-down roguelike shooter that has elements of horror to it. The player is a scientist who's been holed up in a space station for, I think, two or three weeks. Said space station has been overrun with genetically created monsters. The point of the game is to get your character out safely. You teleport from area to area, and each area is infested with more difficult, more horrifying monsters than the area before. I think that sums it up. The most unique thing in my eyes that Teleglitch does is its play with darkness. It uses darkness as a mechanic a ton of different ways. First, there's literal darkness, meaning darkness inside the area that you're in. There are two types. There's low light areas and completely black areas. The low light areas are accessible. They are just places where light isn't getting to very well. And those spaces could very well harbor mutants, zombies, spider cats, guys who throw bombs at you, whatever. Black areas exist basically in any place that the player doesn't have a clear line of sight. Sort of like your character is casting out light and the black areas are just the shadows that are hitting solid objects that the light can't pass through. Of course, both of these forms of darkness make it difficult for you to see, but in completely different ways. The low light areas are very ominous. You can't see clearly what's there, but you can see to a certain extent. Black areas are literal blind spots. So on the other side of a pillar or a wall or a door, anything could be there and you have no idea. There's also another kind of darkness, which is called, according to one of the computer terminals, the blackness. The blackness will, according to the same terminal, explode your brain. These are just pockets of teleportation anomalies left over from experimentation, and these areas of darkness can be used to dispatch enemies or to dispatch you, whichever happens first. There's also the metaphorical and literal quote-unquote darkness of the in-game text. The logs left on computers are disturbing. Among other things, it gives you a look at what you will potentially be facing soon. So in this log, it describes a cat spider that just sounds like something I don't want to meet. These logs also give personal accounts of the horrible things that have happened in these experiments and scientific endeavors. So this sort of narrative telling gives a mental, maybe emotional darkness because you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know what's coming next. So they give descriptions of the monsters that exist in this building, but you don't know when you're going to encounter them. And your imagination runs wild with that. There's a clever thing that they do with the actual physical text that they load on the screen. Instead of just overlaying it, they give the text background. And so as it's writing onto your screen, it's slowly blacking out your vision. When you're reading the terminal, nothing can attack you. Time stands still. One of the few times it actually does. By making the black background of the text cover up the player screen, it makes the screen physically smaller, which just causes more anxiety. There's one final thing that they do with darkness. It's the minimap. The only place that's lit up is the area that you're physically in. So any other area that you might have visited, there's outlines as to where the walls are, and I think there's usually labels as to what individual rooms are, but they don't give you details. So even though you visited there, there's an artificial lack of knowledge which kind of means that if you have to go back, you don't really want to because <laughs> what if things have moved in to an area that you previously cleared? What if a lot of things have moved in there? I don't know if act that actually happens, by the way. This is a lot of darkness. What does it all do? There's ambiance. This is a spoopy game after all. Creepy darkness. Darkness makes every single room in Teleglitch even more claustrophobic. So there's the more obvious fact that black inhabits all the areas that you can't get to. But also, sometimes it sort of spills in because of the way that they render the black areas in order to give the impression of blind spots. Sometimes that blackness sort of spills inwards towards the corridor or room that you're in. It makes it feel even tighter. And then if that's not enough, there's also the darkness that can kill you, which when you're in a firefight and there's a lot of stuff going on, it's really easy to miss that and you can stumble into it, or in some cases, enemies force you into it. 
Darkness in a lot of different ways, metaphorical and literal, contribute to a percentage of what's unknown about this place. Games in general are getting better and better about giving you information constantly. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking of Grand Theft Auto that tracks all of your kills and arrests and all of your statistics. But also a lot of games will fill in a map for you as you visit different rooms. Teleglitch, however, seeks to actively take information away from you. In the case of the minimap, you can only see details of the room that you're currently in. In the game world, you might go around a pillar and now you can't see a different part of the room that you were just in a few moments ago. Now you can't see it at all. By taking away or denying the player the information that they should already have, or that in many modern games you would already have, test three projects make it more difficult for you to stay prepared. And there's a lot of these subtle, let's call them information blackouts, that make it so that you need to keep more and more information in your head. Which means, if you have to keep track of a lot of information, for example, what weapon you have equipped, where you are on the map, what's around your area, what things you might not be able to see right now, that means you're less likely to be ready for, say, a swarm of mutants that happen to be around the corner. The main thing that this element of darkness, employed in all of its forms, contributes to the game of Teleglitch is tension. By making things more difficult to see, it's also more difficult to anticipate surprises. Monster attacks are really common in Teleglitch. They just come out of nowhere. And monsters hiding in darkness, whether it's in low light areas or absolute darkness, that's just as common. You can't even really see past the door that you're about to go through. These constant but really unpredictable random attacks keep you in a steady state of anxiety. Teleglitch does not spend a lot of time outside of that state of anxiety. They don't give you a lot of ease. They just keep it coming constantly. I wonder if there's a last thing I want to say. So, by using darkness in the way that it does, Teleglitch is a scarier game than most. But it's also far more stressful. Cool, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought. Write down in the comment box, right where the comment stuff goes. Uh, let me know what you thought. Comments, questions, concerns, suggestions would be great if you wanted me to cover a particular game or game mechanic or whatever. That would be cool. Uh, subscribe if you like the stuff that I'm doing. If you don't, that's fine too. You know what? It's fine. It's totally fine. Totally cool. Man, my hair is really weird today. Alright, we'll talk soon. Bye.